your Bibles today to 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. Cold temperatures weren't enough to keep you guys inside, I guess. <clears throat> 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. All right. What sort of announcements do we need to make this morning? Kimberly. Wednesday is Joseph's birthday. Woo! Congratulations, Joseph. Good job. Sadie. What? Okay. Very good. Very good. Taya. McKenna's birthday today. This is birthday season, man. From October through, it's like everybody decided to get born. <laughs> All right. Very good. Today's the day for you. What is, what is today? Nine, no, you're older than that. Is that right? Okay. Very good. All right. You just have an old soul. Maybe that's it. Very good. That's a compliment. That's not a... No, It means... It means that you're, thank you, Sean, for the word I was groping around for. Not... No, 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 no. Like, wise. That's right. Well, that's pretty exciting. All right. What else is going on? Wendy. Um... Uh, everybody could keep uh, Mary Rygard in your prayers. Uh -huh. She has COVID. Okay. So, um, yeah, she's not doing so well. So. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, pray for Mary Rygard. Other items this morning. Things need to be announced. Jacob. It's Nathan and Devin's anniversary on Wednesday. What? Oh. On Wednesday? <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right. And you guys, it's nine, right? That's very cool. I only know that because I asked them earlier this morning. It's not like I... See, I think it's about nine. Yes. <clears throat> Terry? We have an anniversary on Wednesday as well. Get out of here. 49. 49? Is that right? <laughs> Woo! You better start planning now. <clears throat> All right. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Misty? Uh, yes, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. So, yeah, a couple of things. Um, I just love doing this after um, we talked about Jesus cleansing the temple in the adult class. <clears throat> so, Jeff Hostetter is hawking calendars. Oh, just hate doing that. So, <clears throat> he's uh, trying to earn money, uh, make some cash for the, for the Ghana mission. So, these are 20 bucks a pop. Um, he took the photos. I can't bring myself to do that anymore. So uh, they're in the back, uh, in the box next to the songbooks. Okay, if you want one, it's 20 bucks. Put your cash in the envelope that's in the box. You're on your honor system. God's watching, and so is someone else. So just take care of things. And uh, if you want one of those, do that. Also, um, I'm making an order here for um, school um, school sweats, short church. So uh, and uh, this year the kids convinced me that we should add sweatpants to the yeah. Um, <clears throat> so if you are interested in those as a student, you get a, your your price is cheaper. Um, as a non-student. You help to, um, uh, what's the word, I'm looking, offset some of the cost for the students. So costs are on here. Um, these little guys will be on the back table also. If you can get those to me today, that would really help me out, and I'll get those ordered promptly. Um, they're going to be uh, black in color with uh, like some light gray kind of um, silver esh uh, sort of uh, um, graphics, and you can see what those are like on the form. So if you're interested in those, please fill those out today. We're not collecting any money today, but if you just let me know what you want and uh, and what sizes, that's on here. I can get those ordered. 
ordered and uh, we'll, we'll get them to the kids. So those are back there also. We've got happy birthday to Joseph. Oh, Hannah? The on Saturday. Oh, yes. All right. What time? 5.30. 5.30 on Saturday, a taco Christmas. Taco Christmas. All right. <laughs> very good. It's going to be all kinds of excitement. So, yep, very good. A Hallmark. A Hallmark. <laughs> a, taco, a taco for Christmas. Is that the one where the guy kind of... Anyway, never mind. Right. And she doesn't, but then... And you're rich, too. That's amazing. Right? Sean? Hey, I'd like some prayers for my wife, Angie. She's had a, a scare of eight-month early pregnancy, and she's having some really strange heart arrhythmias. So I appreciate some prayers for her. And then just a reminder, um, our second of eight free courses here at the church this Wednesday, 530 to 730. This one is developing a home and personal security plan that me and Mr. Uh, Martin over here will be teaching. So hopefully we'll see you guys there. Excellent. <clears throat> Good information. All right, so it's happy birthday to Joseph, Misty, McKenna. Who else did I miss? Well, we're going we're gonna to clap for the anniversaries. Congratulations, Sarah and Gail. Good job, Devin, Nathan. Well done. All right. Great. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Joseph, Misty, and McKenna. Happy birthday to you. You guys make it so easy. All right. Very good. Very good. Second Thessalonians chapter 3. Talking about prayers that, uh, that we see in the New Testament. Prayers that you can pray, right? This sounds like one of those, uh, one of those headlines in a Google search. You know, 10 prayers you can pray that God will hear. Uh, I don't know if we're going to get to 10 or, or more, but uh, this is one on that list. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 1. Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of God may spread rapidly and be glorified just as it did also with you. And that we may be delivered from perverse and evil men, for not all have faith. But the Lord is faithful, and he will strengthen and protect you from the evil one. And we have confidence in the Lord concerning you, that you are doing and will continue to do what we command. May the Lord direct your hearts into the love of Christ and into the steadfastness of Christ. Let's pray. Lord, we are very grateful for the opportunity we have this morning to sit down and consider your word. Father, we're grateful that it has run rapidly and that it has been glorified. And Father, we pray that the word will continue to run rapidly, that it will continue to be glorified, not as the, not as the word of men, but for what it really is, the word of God. Father, we're grateful that we get to play a part in that. And uh, Father, we ask that, um, that you'd work with us to accomplish your purpose. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> <clears throat> Jesus said, um, I have come to cast fire on the earth, um, and how I wish it were already done, how I wish it were already accomplished. <clears throat> Here, Paul prays, he said, pray that, that the word of the Lord would spread rapidly and be glorified. <clears throat> we want the word of God to spread rapidly. When, uh, uh, as Jesus began his ministry, he, he, had, uh, he had a great advantage in the person of John the Baptist. John the Baptist had done a lot of the hard work. Okay? When we're talking about anything moving rapidly, there's two things which are really necessary. And one is momentum, and the other is conditions. Right? So, let's say we want to move a snowball rapidly. Right? Well, first we need some momentum, especially if this is going to be one of those that's on the ground, right? If you're trying to build a snowball and roll it, you need to build some momentum. Well, that comes from a lot of pushing and packing, and I thought that would be a suitable illustration for today, right? But once you get the snowball rolling, if the conditions are right, that is, it's downhill, right? At some point, it should take care of itself, right? And what had small beginnings becomes something that's really quite large. But it takes momentum building and it takes the right conditions in order to produce some sustaining momentum. When uh, um, we went hiking a few years ago and 
Um, it was a particularly steep face. And, uh, and you could walk it uh, most of the time uh, standing up, but you get up to the top and it's quite a ways up. Um, and then we went, we went uh, boulder bowling. There's a lot of loose rocks at the top and we were all up, so it was okay. And nobody else was up there. It was perfectly safe. Um, and see if you can knock over trees. You know, with, if you get a good chunk of rock and you really get her skipping and jumping and not, <clears throat> it's fun to watch. Jen was the winner. She had the, she had the, best, uh, she had the best bowl. But <clears throat> you gotta get it rolling and then the conditions have to be right to produce momentum. Well, when it comes to the Word of God, the Lord has those same two challenges. One is initial momentum, to get it rolling. And that was John's job. And man, John was good at it, right? John was out there preaching in the wilderness, repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. What's he doing? He's trying to get people excited about the fact that the Messiah is coming. John's job was characterized by the scriptures as preparing the way for the Messiah. We even read a little bit of that out of Malachi chapter 3 earlier this morning. We were talking about how he's going to send his messenger before him to prepare the way for the one who would bring the covenant, the coming of Christ. Okay. John does that and he prepares. He does the groundwork so that everybody is already looking for the Messiah when John gets thrown into prison. A few at that point have found him, but a lot more are looking so that John's disciples become Jesus' disciples. Okay? So John did a lot of the groundwork, did a lot of the preparation in order to provide the environment in which the gospel, when it came, could run rapidly. Jesus takes that another step, doesn't he? Jesus' message was the same as John's. Repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And so now what John began, Jesus has amplified. So as Jesus goes out and he preaches in the synagogues and he teaches in the, in the, in the cities and in the towns and all every local burb all over Israel, Jesus is building the same message. Right? And now it's been even further increased by the addition of his signs and miracles, which John did not do, but which created a great deal of excitement in the people because they said, have you heard about Jesus of Nazareth? Have you heard about Jesus of Nazareth? Have you heard about... And so God step by step was preparing Israel for the coming of the gospel message. So that in Acts chapter 2, turn over there for just a moment. In Acts chapter 2, <clears throat> in verse 36, it's not John and it's not Jesus, it's Peter rather. Who gets to preach the first gospel message? So he describes how Jesus is the one that the prophets anticipated. That it was according to their word that he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh suffer decay. That it was according to the Old Testament prophets that he was raised up and they were seated at the right hand of God according to the words of David, his forefather. Then in verse 34, he says, It was not David who ascended into heaven, but he himself said, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. What's happened? David lives a thousand years before Jesus. David's actually about 950, 980 BC. A thousand years before Jesus is born, David makes these prophecies. And Peter says, David wasn't talking about himself. When he said, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Therefore, he says in verse 36, let all the house of Israel know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus, whom you crucified. And when they heard this, they said, ah, yeah, maybe, I guess. I don't know. What's on TV? Their reaction is, is, is uh, startling. I mean, if you went out to the street corner and you said, hey, you know, David the prophet, he said that uh, this was going to happen, that Jesus would die and, and raise again and, and be exalted to the right hand of God. And so you should get on the bus. You should do this Christianity thing. What do you think is going to happen? 
You know what? I think you're right. Let's, let's go do that, shall we? Well, why did, why did Peter get this response? So he tells them, um, uh, crucified, verse 37, when they heard this, they were pierced to the heart. And they said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brethren, what shall we do? Peter said to them, Repent, let each of you be immersed in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and your children, for all who are far off, as many as the Lord our God shall call to himself. And with many other words, he solemnly testified and kept on exhorting them, saying, Be saved from this perverse generation. So then those who had received his word were baptized or immersed, and there were added that day 3,000 souls. Boy, that's a good day, isn't it? That's a good day. 3,000 souls. Now, Peter has a large audience to speak to. But, I mean, 3,000 is good on any day, right? 3,000 people. How many people do you think are at the mall today? 3,000? You think 3,000 people? I don't know. No, no, I get some. No, I don't see them. How many people are, I, I don't know, where are people today? How many people are at home huddled around the fire trying to keep warm? <laughs> How many people were at, were at whatever football game yesterday? What if you could preach the gospel to that, to that number of people? I don't know, on average, a football game in December, instead of the playoffs, let's say on average maybe ah, 40,000? I mean, Grizzly Stadium is small comparative to a lot of those venues. If you could preach to 40,000 people at a time, how many do you think you'd get? How many do you think would go, I am pierced to the heart. <laughs> what shall I do? You say, you should repent and be immersed to have your sins forgiven and receive the Holy Spirit. Okay. How many, how many think would do that? Out of 40,000, you think you would get 1,000? No. Why not? Yeah, I don't think so either. <laughs> Why not? Too cold. Too cold? <laughs> Hell's a lot warmer. <laughs> I, I've broken ice off the Bitterroot River before to, uh, to get somebody in and out of the water as quickly as possible. <clears throat> how, how, why not? All the conditions are right. John built momentum. Jesus built momentum. They all know what has happened with Jesus. There, many of them are witnesses, both of his crucifixion and of his resurrection. So when Peter connects the dots, that that's what David was talking about, well, they all believe because they recognize the Old Testament prophets. You don't have to start from square one with these guys and say, you know, you can really prove objectively that the Bible is the Word of God. They didn't have to. They already believe that. That's why the gospel went to the Jew first and also to the Greek. So you could already start, you know, with a little bit of, of moment. You didn't have to make the first snowball. <clears throat> Why not? Pray that the Word of God run rapidly and that it be glorified. Well, then the Word of God went to those who weren't Christians, didn't it? Jesus told the apostles, He said, You'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, and even to the remotest part of the earth. And they did. They did. <clears throat> so, not just the Jews but also mankind had been prepared to hear the gospel message. <clears throat> Some, it's going to take a lot more work though. Because step by step, the Lord has done some tremendous things. Okay. Um, in each stage of mankind's history, not to bore you, but um, sometimes people think that history just kind of goes round and round in no particular order. You know, it's just, uh, that's kind of a common view of the world is that everything is cyclical, right? And, and you even see, so if you feel like you're going around in circles, a lot of people agree with you, right? But even uh, uh, when people try and, and sort history out 
you know, they think, well, it's just kind of the past repeating the past and the future is going to be the past again. And you even see that in Solomon because from an earthly perspective, that's precisely how it appears, right? Nothing new under the sun. We're just going around and around again. What has been will be. And here we go. Do you know that's not the way God sees history? God is not going around and around in circles. God is working His plan. And without boring you too much, no one will be able to say on Judgment Day, Lord, if only we had lived in a perfect world. A, a place where there wasn't sin. Because the Lord will say, you know what, we tried that. It was called the Garden of Eden. You may recall it didn't work out so well. No one will be able to say on that day, Lord, if only we had known in conscience, if only we had internally some kind of compass or guide to direct us to right and wrong, I think we could have done okay. Because the Lord will say, no, we tried conscience from the time of the garden until Moses. We tried conscience. And if you recall, that didn't go so well either. A little thing called the flood happened, right? And no one will be able to say, yes, but Lord, if only you had written it down for us in something unchangeable, because we're so fickle, we're, our hearts are so, are so easily swayed. If only you'd put it down on something like, I don't know, stone. Maybe we would have been able to keep, Lord will say what? We tried that and it didn't work out so well, right? What was the, what was the, the, the message or the lesson of the law is that all men are sinful. What has God done? Galatians chapter 3 <clears throat> says that the Lord has shut up all men under sin. Why? The law actually is, is, is like a prison. It shuts up all men under sin that they might seek for God. All the information's out there. It only took God, oh, I don't know, say about four or 5,000 years to get things ready. But now it's ready. Turn to, uh, um, turn to John chapter 4. <clears throat> In John 4, and... <clears throat> verse 35. <clears throat> Jesus said, don't say, there are yet four months and then comes the harvest. Excuse me, do you not say, there are yet four months and then comes the harvest. He said, behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields. They are white for harvest. Jesus is not talking about grain or some other agricultural crop here. <clears throat> He's talking about people. He says, you got to lift up your eyes, look on the fields. They are already white for harvest. He said in verse 36, already he who reaps is receiving wages and gathering fruit for life eternal that he who sows and he who reaps may rejoice together. In this case, the saying is true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you have not labored. Others have labored. You have entered into their labor. Sometimes I think it's easy for us in, in, our, uh, in, uh, in our time, our, our day, um, to look at all the reasons why the fields are not white for harvest. Well, there are certainly some challenges, aren't there, to the Word of God. A secular worldview is a significant challenge. Right? But that's not anything that the rest of the Gentile world didn't have in Paul's day. Right? <clears throat> a, um, a, a materialistic preoccupation is a challenge. But do you think people were less fleshly minded in the first century? There is a, uh, there is a general disdain for the scriptures and the Judeo-Christian worldview. Okay. But that's no different today than it has been in days gone by. I don't, when I look at the world and part of this is a function of choice. But when I look at the world, I don't see a world that is an impregnable fortress against the gospel. The world is 
white for harvest. When else in the history of the world has the gospel been able to move at the speed of YouTube? I mean, I'm, I'm very grateful that you guys are here this morning. Okay? I'm also very grateful that there's a lot of folks who are joining us who aren't here. That because of what Tim does and the effort that he puts into making sure that, that messages are posted online, uh, I know that there are folks all over the country who tune in to what we do in Missoula. Praise the Lord for that. Praise the Lord for that. The McBrides may be far away, but oftentimes they're closer than you think. Okay. Okay. When else in the history of the world has there been access to the Word of God like there is right now? There has never been another moment like this. Ever. Ever. In the history of the world, there has never been a time when anybody who wants the gospel message can get it, and largely in their own language. That's, ne that's never happened before. There's never been a time when travel is so easy as it is right now, and so cheap. I mean, I know it hurts to shell out those few hundred dollars to get a plane ticket. How would you like to do it the old-fashioned way? <laughs> I mean, you can be anywhere you need to go, right? Yeah, I'm going to get on a plane and go to South Carolina, to Myrtle Beach, there near the ocean. I'm going to do that for Jesus, I want you to know. <laughs> we all have our crosses to bear. Right? But you know, you, you can be there in a matter of hours, not a matter of months. When else has that been the case? When else has it been the case that people have access to the kind of information to validate the scriptures? So that you have all the tools at your disposal. I mean, can you think of what a tremendous blessing it is to have a concordance? <laughs> really? You get all of that. Not only do you get that, but you get the benefit of all of the strides that have been made throughout the Reformation in restoring the knowledge of the Gospel and the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Tell me that there are obstacles to moving the Gospel today. There's never been a time. Never. For the Gospel to move as it can today. <clears throat> just needs a little push, you know. Turn to Acts chapter 6. <clears throat> Acts chapter 6. <clears throat> We're just going to mention this briefly because I've told you this before, but a little reminder for you is not a problem and doesn't hurt me either. <clears throat> In Acts chapter 6, the, uh, the 12 apostles are in danger of being coming preoccupied serving the, the, uh, uh, the widows, their daily allotment of food. And so they said in verse 2, the twelve summoned the congregation of the disciples. They said, it's not desirable for us to neglect the word of God in order to serve tables. Select from among you, brethren, seven men of good reputation, full of the spirit and wisdom, whom we may put in charge of this task. But we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And they did. <clears throat> and so what did they do in verse 7? Well, uh, yeah, verse 7, the word of God kept on spreading and the number of the disciples continued to increase greatly in Jerusalem and a great many of the priests were becoming obedient to the faith. Praise the Lord, right? What a tremendous thing that was. The apostles said, listen, we've got to be preaching the word. So we're going to devote ourselves to prayer and the ministry of the word. The ministry of the word without prayer is like trying to row a boat with one oar. <coughs> Because it's not just you. God works with us, but He doesn't work around us. In uh, Colossians chapter 4, just swing over there for a quick moment. Colossians chapter 4, just going to do a, a touch and go here. 
Colossians chapter 4, in verse 3, Paul says, Pray at the same time for us as well, that God may open up to us a door for the word, so that we may speak forth the mystery of Christ, for which I also have been imprisoned, in order that I may speak it, uh, that I may make it clear in the way I ought to speak. Right? Lord, we need doors opened. The Lord will undo the lock, but you've got to push on the door. I can't remember if I told you this story. It's a little bit embarrassing, so don't repeat it, okay? <clears throat> I'd made a deal with the guy at the at the uh, one of the city yards here in, in in Missoula. The city of Missoula has a like a oh, I don't know, a parts yard, you know, sort of stuff. That's, anyway, I was picking up some scrap stuff that they didn't want because I just can't stand to let free stuff go to waste. And so, <clears throat> so I was down there, and I made the deal. Listen, I will, I will be there at, I don't remember, such and such a time, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock. And uh, he said, okay, I'll be there. You know, I'll leave the, he said, ah, great, okay. So I pull up, and nobody's there. And sure enough, the, the gates are still chained. And, uh, well, so I start, you know, calling up, uh, you know, so and so, oh, he's at lunch, and, you know, it's, well, city. He's going to be a while. So, so we can't get a hold of him, and nobody seems to know. Okay, when will he be back? And no, and so we're waiting, and we're waiting, and we're waiting, and finally, one of my, one of my insightful children says, "Did you check the, you know, is the gate locked?" <laughs> Come on, that's ridiculous. Anyone can see that the gate is chained. <laughs> Sit back down. <laughs> Sure enough, he had just, he had just draped the chain over the gate. It, gates are open. Sometimes all you got to do is push. <laughs> right? Sometimes all you got to do is push. Look at that. The door was open the whole time. But how will you know? Well, if you're sitting back there looking at the door, but you're not pushing on it, you won't find out. But if you push... Well, you, never you never know, know what door might, door might be open. What door, what door might, might be open? Be open. <clears throat> personally, personally, I, I find I, it, I find um, it um, troublesome. When, when, I, when I hear Christians talk, talk about how difficult, how difficult culture, culture is. is. <clears throat> when was the last, when was the last time you were thrown in jail? jail? Right. Uh, most, of most of that stuff is just, is just an excuse for people not to push on the doors they already have. Nobody's going to listen anyway. Right? I mean, not in, not in this day and age. Of course in this day and age. When would they be more likely to listen? Culture's waking up. But people are realizing the truth, the truth is not in mainstream channels. People trying to figure, stuff, figure out. stuff out. Push on, push the, on the door. But pray, but pray that, the that the Lord opens the doors. Because the Lord, because the Lord doesn't, doesn't open them. them. But it's not, but it's not much use of pushing on them, is there? There's several error on that too. side, too. See how, see how hard, hard we're working, see what we're doing? Look how hard, Look how hard we're pushing on. on. You're not working, not working with, with the Lord. The Lord. It's a, fool's it's a fool's errand. Pray for, pray for us, us. <clears throat> Paul says. And pray, and pray for the Word of God. Turn to, turn to, uh, uh, turn to Romans chapter 1. Pray for the, pray word, for the word of God that it run, run rapidly and that it, and be, that it be glorified. glorified. <clears throat> Romans chapter 1 verse 18. Paul also asked them in Thessalonians to pray that they be delivered from perverse and evil men. In Romans chapter 1, verse 18, he says, The wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men. What do they do? They suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Absolutely they do. Absolutely they do. They suppress the truth. One of two things is going to happen. If, if there's a fire and you try to suppress that fire, one of two things will happen. <clears throat> Either it'll, it'll be smothered, smolder, and die, or it will incinerate what you pull and pile on top of it. They try and suppress the truth in unrighteousness. 
<clears throat> I hate to tell you, but persecution was a real part of the gospel spreading in the first century. It's, it's like, you know, it's like when you have that fire in the kitchen and you decide to take a big pan of water on that grease fire and, and you know, to put it out. Persecution moved the gospel in the first century. Could God use it to move the gospel again? Sure. And would we still pray that the word of God spread rapidly and be glorified? Absolutely. Absolutely. Are there going to be people, perverse and evil men, who try to suppress the truth in unrighteousness? Of course there will! <coughs> but when has that not been the case? Pray. Pray that the Word of God run rapidly and be glorified. We're going to finish up in 2 Timothy chapter 2. You can get the same thing out of Philippians 1, verses 12 through 18, but <clears throat> we're going to do 2 Timothy chapter 2 today. <clears throat> in verse 9. <clears throat> uh, let's start in, pardon me, let's start in verse 8 so we get the whole sentence. Remember Jesus Christ, risen from the dead, descendant of David, according to my gospel, for which I suffer hardship, even to imprisonment as a criminal. But the word of God is not imprisoned. <coughs> Paul said, I've been imprisoned as a criminal. But you know what is still on the loose? The word of God. Paul wore chains for the gospel message. But you know what can't be chained? The gospel message. Paul was thrown in prison, but the gospel was not imprisoned. <coughs> Paul, <clears throat> through his example, moved the gospel further. In Philippians chapter 1, he says that because of his imprisonment, the gospel hadn't been stopped. He just infected all the Praetorian Guard. All the, all the governor's security service, they, they, they'd caught the gospel message too. That's the problem. You know, wh wh where do you put somebody who's a, who's a walking carrier of the gospel? Where do you, where do you lock him up? It, Christians are just naturally infectious people. Yeah. The word of God is not imprisoned. Pray that the word of God run rapidly. Pray that the word of God be glorified. That the word of God is exalted to its proper position that it isn't relegated to a collection of wise myths and stories, that it's not, that it's not derided as some second-rate, um, you know, cheap prophecy, <clears throat> but for what it really is, the Word of God. And stand up for it. When you hear that kind of blather, stand up. No, that's not true. The church is the pillar and support of the truth. It's on the church that the Word of God is lifted up. It's on the church that the Word of God is set before the nations. Pray that the Word of God run rapidly and be glorified. The people would recognize it for what it is. The Word of God. Let's pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we're so grateful that your Word is unstopped. That, um, that it never it never leaves your mouth without returning, having accomplished the purpose for which you sent it. Father, help us to take confidence in your word that it always does what you intended it to do. And help us, Father, to do our part to move it forward. Lord, we're grateful that we get to be partners with you in the gospel message. Father, help us that, um, that we be... Um, do we have confidence in your word um, and, and spread it and allow the word to do what it does. Lord, we pray that the word of God would run rapidly. Father, we are um, excited to see that happen. That um, uh, We're excited to be able to be a part of that process. And Father, 
We are grateful to be able to participate with you in the, in the moving of the gospel in whatever way seems best to you. Father, we're grateful that, that we get to have a part in that. Um, Lord, what part we play and how we do it, um, Lord, you know best and um, use us as you will to, uh, uh, to move the gospel message that the word of God would be glorified, that the name of Jesus Christ would be glorified, that sinners would be converted to you and that, uh, uh, and that it would indeed run rapidly. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Get all excited. Go and tell everybody that Jesus Christ is King. Get all excited. Go and tell everybody that Jesus Christ is King. Get all excited. Go and tell everybody that Jesus Christ is King. Jesus Christ is still the King of Kings. King of Kings. Some progress on that driver's license renewal. Is something wrong with your hand? Or is it infected? <laughs> okay, all right. Good. What's that? <laughs> oh, bummer. I missed yeah. out here. I wonder if they were around feeling so hot. Yikes. You got lunch plans? Well, are you on the men? I got an errand run. Yeah. Good. Get back soon enough for you.